Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the CRKT home front. Haven't you uh, reviewed that knife before? Yeah, this is a different version. Uh, the CRKT home front that you're thinking of is the version that, uh, you know, disassembles without tools, right? But the field strip technology, I think is what they call it. Uh, this one just is not, it doesn't have that. It's just, you have to use regular tools, right? Um, some people are gonna say, that's less interesting. I would agree, but I still wanna talk about this because there's a, there's, a, there's a discussion that I wanna have about this knife and I'm gonna have that discussion with you guys today. Uh, thanks so much to CRKT for sending this in for me to take a look at. Depending on when you're watching this video, uh, you'll be able to buy it or pre-order it. Or I'll, I'll make sure there's links right down below so you guys can check it out. Uh, thanks to my patrons who are supporting me and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. As far as I know, as far as I can tell, this is no different than the other home front or home fronts that I looked at. It's really hard to, now that I've got 2,600 uploads, it's really hard to remember everything I've seen. So eight and eight and a quarter inches, blade length, three and a half inches, cutting edge, also three and a half inches, maybe even 3.6 inches. How about uh, some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2? Keep in mind, uh, keep, uh, keep in mind we are at an angle, so uh, the one on top is actually, the Rat 2 is actually quite a bit, some, about a half an inch longer. Doesn't look it, but it is. Uh, how about up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3? Mm, there we go. Uh, how about up against the uh, Demco AD 20.5, which I've decided to include in size comparisons now. And last but not least, let's do the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and the Benchmade Bug Out. So there you go. It's a full. It's what I would consider to be a full-size knife. How's the action? Well, it's assisted. Yeah, yeah I, assisted knives were cool. Like the last time I remember being impressed by an assisted knife was 2007, and I'm not super convinced that they were really all that neat. <laughs> um, so a lot of CRKT knives are assisted. There are some people that still like that assisted feature. My wife is somebody who really appreciates the assisted feature. Uh, she carries a blur, right? Uh, that's a Kershaw, but she carries a blur and she likes that. Uh, my issue is that you have to work against the tension on the way back down. Well, that's not really that big of a deal. Um, the assisted feature is like, it's kind of like, you know, somebody holding my hand across the street. I can make it across the street, right? <laughs> I, don't need, I think. I'm pretty sure I can make it across the street, right? Um, I'm not elderly. Uh, I'm glad there are people out there doing that, right? But I don't need this because Flippers have existed for a long time with properly tuned detents that you can just flip and you don't, there's no reason for the assisted thing, right? We have, there, there are knives that, that cost $30 that do it perfectly. Um, the titanium home front, if I'm not mistaken, was actually a manual flipper. Admittedly, it was not the best flipper I've ever handled, but it was a manual flipper, so they can do it. So it's one of those things where it's assisted. I'm pretty sure that the less expensive version of the uh, field strip technology version is also assisted, right? There's a lot of stuff in CRKT's line that is assisted. They have catered to the less serious, just kind of the knife, the general knife crowd for a long time. And they've got some stuff that's kind of, you know, dipping into the enthusiast crowd, right? The CRKT is a good example of a company that kind of dips between and that's okay, right? It's just the assisted feature is not gonna be for everybody. Um, so yeah, but I mean, it, it does work. So you, you pull down on the flipper tab and it's gonna deploy, right? There's no halvesy, like the, the, the moment it crosses that threshold, it's gonna deploy, so there you go. Uh, carry profile thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. You can see here it's really about the same. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. Um, it's a, it's a full-size knife, so it's gonna be closer to the experience you have with the Spyderco PM2. Definitely longer than the pair of three, but not as tall. Even including the flipper tab, we're still not as tall. So yeah, there you go. Uh, materials, on this particular guy, they're all over the place with their materials. 
They have that 1.4116, whatever the heck that steel is. They still use all eight, which, e yikes. Uh, this guy's 12C27, which is okay. It's all right. I think periodically they use D2. Um, <coughs> I really think they should look into um, Nitro V and 14C28N. Uh, those are steels that a lot of people really prefer alongside D2, right? The kind of the triangle of the different preferable budget blade steels, because this, this is still close to budget territory, and I think any of those steels would be okay. Uh, 12C27, like 14C28N, is Sandvik. It's just people, like 14C28N just has better overall balance for uh, EDC, but 12C20, this is 12C27, um, it, it, it's okay. I can't, I'm not going to complain too much about that. It's okay. I'm glad it's not all eight. Let's put it that way. Um, let's go ahead and, uh, oh yeah, and we're looking at aluminum on this, which is actually, the aluminum is very nice. Um, and then we've got steel liners, full recessed steel liners, which you can see right there. Wait, where's the scale? Here it is. I bet this is pretty heavy. I'm guessing four and a half to five ounces more 5.61 ounces so ratios people uh probably not going to be your favorite thing in the world but i bet it still weighs less than your iphone with its gigantic weird case that you have on it right because that's what we all well actually i carry an android but yeah our phones probably weigh more uh if you're just carrying your knife in your knife pocket not that big of a deal right um, but if you carry lots of things in your pockets and maybe you're wearing jogging pants every single day uh, then this may not be for you, right? So just do with that information what you will. Uh, we will do a hardware check because like I said, you um, you do have to actually use tools to disassemble this. Um, so you can get my tools right down in the description. They are very inexpensive and very recommendable. Still, still using the same stuff. I really like these. I've been using this for, I've been using the same tools for three or four years now. Uh, T8 for the pivot and then of course we have T6 for the body screws. Not too many. It's actually pretty minimal uh, in terms of the hardware. Not as minimal as the version that you can just disassemble with your fingers. Um, but uh, it's minimal. So as long as you have quality tools and a place to put your hardware, you should be good to go. Let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness with my calipers that are missing. No, they're not. Here they are. Uh, I think this, I think it's got a fairly thick blade stock. It, it, it looks like maybe 140 thousandths or so. Let's check. Nope, 130 thousandths. Okay, not too bad. All right, meat and potatoes. So this is the, yeah, it's the home front. Uh, this is a Ken Onion design. As far as I know, yeah, right there, Ken Onion design. Ergonomics, good. In fact, uh, pretty comfortable. Pocket clip, good. Actually, I really like the pocket clip. I don't know why they didn't recess that one screw. <laughs> Just let that thing poke up, but okay. Uh, probably not going to drop it. The liner lock, plenty of access to the liner lock. Um, I'd say there's no double clutch, but it's assisted, so your work, you can't, right? You, that's the tension bars right there. So anyways, um, yeah, but the ergonomics are great, and honestly, day-to-day um, -day use, whether it's just a simple cut or you're gonna be doing some elongated cutting, right? Yeah, barehanded or with gloves, you're fine. It's easy to hang on to. Gotta appreciate the belly here. All of the same, I mean, I reviewed this knife so long ago, I have really largely the same types of things to say about it. I'm kind of disappointed I can't get at that fuller, right? I do like that there's a hole in the flipper tab and I like how the flipper tab is shaped. It acts as a guard that's not uncomfortable. It's not, you know, ramming into your finger or anything like that if you're gonna choke up on it. You're not too far from the cutting edge and there's really nothing in the cutting path except for this fuller, which doesn't need to be there, but it's not really hurting anything, so I don't know. Fit and finish overall is really good. You know, CRKT um, like existed in this area for a while where I was kind of like, yeah, yeah, they're okay. They kind of, some they're hit or miss with, and then they just seem to get better and better and better. And honestly, the last few things that I've handled that were brand new from CRKT have been very good. Uh, a lot of their stuff is manufactured in Taiwan, not everything, but um, you know, wherever it's manufactured, the newer stuff seems to be really good. Like seating of the hardware, uh, the final cutting bevel, and just the blade, like every, the symmetry of things, like where there, where there is symmetry, it's, it's exact, right? So, I mean, and it looks, it just looks good all the way around. This big star thing is kind of this knives, you know, the Captain America shield on the front, that's just, 
that's part of this knife. It's there. Some people are going to love it. Some people are going to hate it. I am kind of indifferent and leaning on the side of I kind of wish that it wasn't there. I kind of wish that it was just a regular pivot, but it's there. So, okay, right? This particular blade is bead blasted. I think they come in a couple different finishes. The actual edge, uh, so there's a flat that runs, I don't know, 85% the length of the blade. Nice swedge up here, it looks good. The, the whole blade looks good. There's a nice belly out here. The final cutting edge is um, definitely not thin, but it's not like mega thick or anything like that. Um, as far as how it feels gliding through paper, which again, you know what, when I do this test, it does not really prove anything. It slices all right. You can see where we are kind of starting to, the, the lips of the, the edge of the um, cut is sort of, sort of uh, what am I trying to say? <laughs> I, the edges of the paper where I cut it are, start, are starting to roll up. So there's a little bit of tear going on, right? It's not a perfect slice, but it's fine. You know, day-to-day -day EDC, kind of a, just a relatively thick edge. Um, it probably could be a little bit thinner but it's okay, right? Day-to-day -day use, especially if you're gonna go outside and beat on it, right? You're gonna be good to go. Uh, not a whole lot of billboarding, it just says CRKT. I really dislike these really random codes. K252GXP, why? Like, okay, but it's on there, not 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 that big of a deal. I do like this, this looks good. This this little pattern in here, I can't I can't honestly say it provides any meaningful traction. Most of the lock-in, which again, if I didn't say is very good, most of that is just gonna come from the general, right, these lines here. And then there's a little bit of jimping if you wanna, you know, put your thumb there. And then the backspacer, I guess, is gonna offer a little bit of traction as well. But this texture is mostly just to look at. I appreciate that though, because this would be very boring otherwise. Uh, it's kind of just these little up and down little chevrons um, and it makes me think of the gravity area in uh, Mega Man 5, I don't know why, <laughs> for Nintendo, that's what it makes me think of. Um, and then there's these couple of little divider lines giving it that faux bolster look. I mean, it, it is a faux bolster, but giving it that bolster look uh, in the form of faux. <laughs> There's a lanyard hole! There's a backspacer, and the backspacer looks good. Um, it's just a, you know, kind of a gear pattern backspacer that extends a good length. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's right there, if, if the backspacer is there specifically because the belly starts to come out, and if it weren't, maybe you'd be able to touch the blade. I'm honestly not sure about that. If that is the case, smart move by CRKT because I definitely don't want to cut my finger reaching into my pocket uh, for this knife, but you can't touch the blade where it's at, so that's fine. Uh, pocket clip, really great. Really like the pocket clip. In and out of the pocket, this thing is super easy. This It's squared off uh, right here, but it's not sharp. It's ultra deep, it doesn't need to be ultra deep, but it is, and it carries really well. Uh, so I don't really have a problem with that. Stop pin is located actually internally. I feel like the old one wasn't that way, but maybe I'm wrong. You can see it right there. There's a, uh, just like a channel on the blade and it rides in there and then stops at the front and then again at the back. So there you go. Lock up, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> what <coughs> happened? I don't know, I'm sorry. Completely and totally solid. No lock stick, no pivot lash, right? And the action is, while it's assisted, it is a smooth assisted action. How's the centering? Centering's actually on. Yeah, okay, so. Uh, I went to um, CRKT, this is, usually it doesn't happen this way, but, <laughs> so I went to Blade HQ and typed in CRKT Homefront. Of course, this exact version wasn't available yet at the time of this recording. Remember, when you guys are watching this, there's always people who are confused by this. I have to pre-record all of my content. There is no way, as somebody who uploads twice a day, it's not like I upload two videos, uh, it's like I record two videos and then upload them that same day. No, <laughs> it's not humanly possible to keep up at that pace. I have to pre-record all of my content. So you are seeing this video. Uh, it's been sitting in queue and waiting to go public for probably a few weeks now. So three weeks in the past, imagine, right? That's where I'm at right now. Uh, I went to Blade HQ and saw that this specific version of the CRKT Homefront 
was listed at uh, MSRP $110. Pre-order price, $98. Yeesh. Okay, I went to the CRKT website and it's available right now for like 83 bucks. So, I don't know what Blade HQ is doing there, but that's wrong. Um, as far as like my time right now, CRKT website, right? And listen, I have an affiliate link for Blade HQ. So, like I make money if you pre-order from Blade HQ, but I'm gonna tell you, you can get it off the, I don't make any money if you go and buy it from CRKT, but I'm gonna tell you, you can buy it from CRKT off their website, at least it appears that way, for like $83, which I think is okay. I think it's okay. Um, here's my, this is my biggest complaint with this thing. Why is it, why did you do a liner lock version of it? I just don't get that. Um, the best, this is actually a really cool knife, but what's cool about it is not, what makes it cool was the, this, you know, that you could disassemble it without tools, right? That's cool. That's the thing. How often do you need to disassemble your knife? Not usually very often. That's what people always try to point out. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> Uninformed peasants of the knife world. Yes, hear me, hear me now. Let me blow your minds. This is, this here is a gimmick. Yes, you've all been bamboozled. It's a gimmick because how often are you disassembling your knives? Oh, thank you, yes. Yes, you can pay me on your way out. Yeah, um, yeah, we know that, thanks. Um, it's not, it's fine. Like the knife world's full of gimmicky stuff. And, and honestly, like, <laughs> you know, there's, like the average knife person knows that like they're buying into something because it's got an interesting gimmick. Half of my knife collection is interesting gimmicks. I don't buy stuff. I don't buy all of my knives because I'm like, I am going to put every last element of this thing through its maximum utility. <laughs> and I have to get exactly dollar for dollar out of its utility. I know we know that, right? It's still cool though. The reason, the reason that I'm here talking to you, the reason that there are people watching this and there's so many people interested in the knife world is because it's interesting. It's because not everything is an open L or a buck 110. Those knives have no gimmicks, right? So if you want no gimmicks, then enjoy those two because they're just knives. <laughs> but yeah. Okay, so the field strip thing is is a gimmick, but it's a cool one. I like it. It's neat, and it's a, it's definitely the thing that gives this knife its character. What we want, it's like CRKT is just dancing around. <laughs> like they have they have a few different versions of this, and each version is just like it's not really what we want, right? <laughs> the best possible version of this would be an inexpensive version, right? So here, so we have aluminum. That's fine. They do, they do plastic, I don't really like that. I know they work with G10, so they could definitely do G10, right? Do something like that, preferably aluminum or G10. And then a steel, like, okay, D2, that would be okay. I think people would be happier with 14C28N, Nitro V, there's a handful of others. And then let it have the field strip technology and then keep it, I would say about 80. I, I think that's about, that would be fair. I, I think, I, I don't want to speak for everybody, but I, I feel like that's what I want, right? I, I think I would buy that. I think I would say, hey, even though I'm sure CRKT would just send me one, I, I think I would say, hey, let me buy one of those. That's pretty cool. And then make it in black and brown and green and whatever other, you know, earthy colors that, you know, we pretend couch warriors. <laughs> like right um but yeah seriously uh that would be cool this field strip technology while it's not um it's not a something you you utilize all the time i mean and a knife like that i wouldn't be i would not be afraid at all to take it out and use it and get it dirty or whatever and you know i'm like oh it's getting a little gritty time to take it apart well that's a literally a five second process with that knife and from what i remember it worked pretty well um, so now, you know, to be fair, I didn't take it out and, you know, use it in like 
the most extreme environments. I didn't go use it in a desert and then use it in a tundra and then use it in the Marianas Trench, right? And then use it on the moon. I didn't go do all that. So I don't know how well that's gonna hold up over time. But from what I could see with the one that I had, it, it seemed pretty solid, right? It seemed like you had to go through a pretty deliberate couple of steps to get it to, you know, come apart. It's not like you're gonna be using it and it's just gonna fly apart. So I don't know. That's my thought. This is okay. Like, is this specific version worth picking up? I don't know. I mean, eh, eh, like, at this price point, the $75 to $100 price point, you have so many options. There's like a billion options and this is just, without the field strip technology, this is just like an assisted knife from CRKT. So the design itself, like, wow, yeah, Ken Onion, I mean, yeah, Ken Onion has made some cool stuff, but like, this is just a knife now. Um, so if you really, really are just like, I love how the home front looks, then okay, you know? And you know what? It's made well. The edge is sharpened well. The steel is reasonable. The materials overall are reasonable. The price, at least off CRKT's website, is reasonable. Um, it's not amazing, it's reason. Everything, this is this is just a reasonable, just normal knife. That I, if I was gonna letter grade this whole knife, I would give it a C and be like, this is all right, uh, you know? Um, but uh, that's, you know, it's hard to get excited about something that's just all right. So there you go. It's not really not recommendable, but it's not really recommendable either. So I don't know, I'll link it. You guys can check it out if you want to, but blah, that's kind of my feelings on this. Um, I do appreciate CRKT sending it in for me to take a look at though. It's nice of you guys. I appreciate it. Uh, I will, this will be something that I'll do a giveaway on. So, uh, you can catch my live streams on the weekend, usually Friday or Saturday evening. Can't tell you exactly when because you know, life, it's hard to do that. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's probably something I'll do a giveaway on. So this is neat. That's really all I can say about it. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.